All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook your PS3 controller up to your Windows 10 or newer PC so that you can use it to play all of your latest games without having to replace it with something newer. So the way that you do that now is you use this driver here, the DS HID Mini Driver, which is made by the same people that make Vision Bus Driver that's used to hook your PS4 controller to your PC, or at least in part. So we're going to download this driver here, and if you want to get this working with Bluetooth, you'll also want to download and run the installer for this one after you're done playing around with this other one. So I'm going to click on Download. That's going to take us over to their GitHub page. And we just want to go down here and find the install, the little zip file, and go ahead and click on that. And then it'll ask you where you want that in to download to. I've already got a folder set aside. And it's relatively small at like 4.8 megabytes, so it should really only take a moment for this to download. And then once that's downloaded, just go into the folder that you saved it to. Right click and extract it either with 7-zip or with WinRAR to a folder of the same name. This is going to run uh, very similar if you've played around with DS4 Windows to that program. And then once it's downloaded and you've got it extracted, we're going to go inside this folder and there's a few different files here. This right here is the main application, but we're not going to run that just yet. First, we're going to go into the 64-bit folder. Unless you're running on 32-bit, in which case use the other folder. And inside of here, we need to install two files. The first one is this one here, DS HID Mini, and it says setup information when you hover over it over here under file type. We're going to right click that and we're going to click on install. And it's going to ask you if you'd like to install that, give it confirmation and say yes. And then the other one is IG filter setup information. We're going to install that one as well. Just go ahead and say yes when prompted and then click OK once it confirms that it's installed. And once both those components are installed, we're going to go back to the main folder, and then we're going to run DSHMC, which is the primary application. And once you've got everything installed and set up correctly, you should open up this window, and your controller should appear right here. And then it'll tell you a bunch of information about it, and it'll also tell you if you want to change any major settings you will have to do that as an administrator. So let me go ahead and open that as administrator. So when I have this running as administrator, it's basically the same application, but I can go into settings and it'll tell me a little bit of uh, other information. Like I can enable logging of different things. So in case something's broken or not working correctly, you can figure out why. And then over here under the Bluetooth settings, it'll give me the option to install a secondary driver in order to get that working. That's actually relatively easy and it still works directly through this software. Just click the button to download it. And if I go over here, back into the download section, it'll take you to this similar looking GitHub page for the Bluetooth driver for this controller. Just go down here at the bottom and download the 64-bit version of the installer, not the 32-bit. I don't think many people are probably still running a 32-bit who are using this sort of software. Run the installer, restart your computer, and then open up this program again. There's not really any secondary settings to tick or to enable. When you install the Bluetooth driver, just install it, restart your computer to finish installation, and then once your controller is unplugged, this does kind of hinge on you having your controller plugged in to begin with so we can pair the controller with your computer. But once I unplug this, it'll kick on. And now you'll see with a little Bluetooth icon, here is my PlayStation 3 controller with all of the same settings. And then if I plug it back in, it'll just pop over and say, oh, you've got a controller plugged in again. Now, if you don't see your controller, in this list, after you've completed the installation, you may need to restart at least one time before it'll behave itself. Make sure your controller is properly plugged in with a USB while you're doing the setup. It doesn't set up automatically with the Bluetooth adapter to begin with. You have to have it plugged in, then it'll pair with Bluetooth. If you're trying to get it to run with Bluetooth and you don't know if you have Bluetooth in your computer, maybe run a system checker like Speccy 
which will let you know if you have something like that on your computer. Some people don't actually have Bluetooth built into their Wi-Fi card when they buy a new computer or when they buy computer components. If it's still not behaving, you're going to have to go and look on their forums and peace. All right. So basically, in a nutshell, that's all you have to do to get your PS3 controller running on your computer. And this will now read as an Xbox 360 controller. You have some options in here underneath of the hid device mode to export this information to other sort of systems. Like you can send this to Steam so it'll emulate running this on Steam specifically or in DS4 Windows. So you can use DS4 Windows to rebind keys and all of that. So if you want to play around with that, you can. But I can tell you that out of the box already, Steam recognizes this controller as an Xbox controller. So I can go ahead and just start using this in Steam to play games. And I would probably assume that I can also use this to play games in other software as well. If not, that's when you might need to look at grabbing another driver like DS4 Windows to see if it'll behave better when used with programs like, you know, playing it in Fortnite or something. Um, if your controller is not showing up, I did notice a couple of things when I was setting this up myself. Make sure the controller is plugged in properly with a USB cable. Make sure it's actually had time to charge so it's got, you know, enough power in it to know what's going on. Uh, make sure that you've got all the components properly installed. There's two secondary drivers that you have to install, like I showed you before you can run the main program. And then sometimes you might actually have to restart your computer at least once in order to get it to show up. If you're still having problems, they have a very detailed walkthrough on the website that I will link you to download the drivers. Make sure you take a peek at that. They have a lot of different troubleshooting information in there that can help you figure out why your controller might not be showing up when you know that the controller still works. So that'd be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is how you use DS HID Mini to hook up your old PS3 controller to your Windows 10 or newer PC so that you can play games with it. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.